Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales of the Space. Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. The Markets of Ashrilly Prime, written by Grenadier42. The open market on Ashrilly Prime was in full swing as the hot red sun beat down upon the tops of the tents, stalls, and patrons. Those not used to the blistering heat of the desert sun walked around with head wraps cooling fans, and even in some cases, full environmental suits as they shopped for spices, luxury clothes, foods, and other goods to satisfy whatever their heart desired. The capital city of Asni stood towering and glistening in the background. The setting sun reflected in burnt oranges off the glass, billboards, and trees that covered the ancient city. My lone human wandered through the market, pushing easily past the throngs of other buyers and sellers, attempting to haggle down to a fair price for the knockoff. He had wrapped a brown cloak over the top of his head, giving him a hood and a measure of protection from the sun. It also gave him more of a sense of anonymity, though his graying hair, dark brown skin, and brown eyes would not have made him stand out any more or less than any other species present. After several rows of walking, he turned suddenly and moved into one of the older, more permanent areas of the market. Here, stalls are set up into tall buildings with multiple layers of shops and walkways open to the air. He navigates easily through the throngs, passing by criers, living billboards, and other fancy light shows attempting to draw his eye. It isn't until he gets to a shop selling discount hypercoils for an off-brand truck rig that he stops and seems to consider his options. He steps into the stall, setting off a small bell announcing his presence. A grizzled old Kandari looked up from reading a paper and blinked his four eyes in surprise. His mouth slowly broke into a wide grin, his feeding tentacles moving out of the way to display pointed teeth. Oh no! Oh no, is that you, you old bird? He laughed joyously, moving around behind the counter to get towards the folding axis. Opening up the counter, he waddled around, moving awkwardly in his moisture suit. He extended out two of his arms and embraced the human in a huge hug. What is it, Peter? Five years? Uh, I thought that you'd been given your body to salt. Mano grasped Kandari's arms and held him at arm's length, smiling before removing his hood. I'm not yet that old, squid brain. The Kandari laughed again before patting Anna on the back and motioning for him to come around to the back. Going back through the counter axis, he moved aside a display cloth and typed in a code on a revealed keypad. A hidden doorway swung open, revealing a room lined with cushions of varying shapes and sizes, as well as a large glass tank filled with steaming water. In the center stood a vase-like structure with various pipes and cords attached to it. Gobble! Sit, smoke with me, the Gandhari said. It has been too long to get straight to business. Arno smiled. Agreed, Callus. Agreed. He followed him into the room and took a seat on the cushions as Callus slowly and awkwardly got out of his environmental suit and climbed into the water tank. He sighed with contentment, his tentacles and arms treading the water easily as he settled into a comfortable rhythm. After a few moments, he reached over and began fiddling with the central device before finally pulling off one of the tubes and handing it to Arno. To your health, he said with another broad smile. May your skin never dry out, Arno said with an equally large smile. And the two quickly fell into a small talk, discussing matters of little importance like old friends will sometimes do. Unfortunately... As is customary with all meetings that are not quite by chance, Callus began to eye Arno suspiciously. He knew that men didn't return from the salt without having found a new purpose, or, more worryingly, rediscovered an old one. Arno, oh, Callus finally said during a lull in the conversation. What are you really doing here? Arno sighed heavily. He pulled on the smoker once more before replacing the mouthpiece and leaning back into the pillows, all while exhaling the thick cloud of sweet-smelling smoke. He stayed still for another few moments before he looked over at Callus. 
Revulets of worry and concentration spread across his face. I need a butcher, Anna said quietly, after a smoke had already begun to clear. Callus barely kept himself from leaping out of the tank and strangling the other. What are you doing, Arno? He hissed loudly. You're retired. Yes, I'm retired, Arno said angrily, not even looking towards the old Kandari. I got my last payday, and I went to a lovely tropical planet on the outer systems to hide. He waved his arms around, seemingly tracing an image only he could see. Huge orange trees floating across a blue sky with exotic women serving me fancy drinks with little umbrellas. Arno looked over at Callus. His eyes started to glisten. I can't get their faces out of my mind, Callus. I see them. The ones I couldn't afford or couldn't get to in time. Begging and pleading every time I laid down to sleep. He wiped furiously at his eyes for a moment. I can't even get a proper wife, Callus. I see their faces. Everywhere. Callus slowly climbed out of his tank and moved over to sit in the pillows beside his old friend. He pulled in the smoker, exhaling clouds of smoke before passing it over. Arno took it and did the same, and the two passed it back and forth a few minutes in silence before Callus finally asked, What changed? I was in a bar, Arno said quietly, inhaling the smoke, and a woman approached me, nice, pretty, human, all the right checkboxes. But you're paranoid, Callus said, taking the mouthpiece. Twenty years looking for those marks will do that to you, Anna said bitterly. She had one all right, the pleasure one, Pandalex. Callus hissed, a sound made more unsettling as his skills flipped open in a threat response. Yeah, Anna said, them. He took back the mouthpiece and inhaled again, breathing out as he talked. She was, um, gone, just meat and bones. I did what I could, but the black cells caused the assembly problems for a reason. Callus took back the mouthpiece. What do you want from me, Arno? I'm old, Arno said after a moment's thought. I can't fight like I used to. The black cell showed me that much, he muttered. Then he got out of there before he rubbed his eyes and looked at Callus. I do have one thing, though. Money. Lots of it. More than I can reasonably spend in my lifetime. You're looking to buy? Callus asked, confused. Buy and free, Arno said. I can get one or more out, Callus. One more, and then I'll have done all I could. Callus hummed to himself. A sound Arno felt reminded him of whales back on Earth. It was a high, squeaky, and yet deep and reverberating all at the same time. As Callus hummed, he stood back up and began putting back to the environment suit. He seemed to be refusing to look at Arno as he dressed before he suddenly turned back. You humans and your passion. What? Arno asked, confused. You're too passionate, Callus said, as he finished closing the water seal clamps of his suit. You cannot stop the leave well enough alone. You must always push, push, push. Never accept the job that is finished. Now, hold on, Arno said, starting to rise to his feet before Callus interrupted him. Do you know how much you saved, Arno? Callus said. His tentacles flailing around in frustration and anger. Thousands, thousands owe their lives to you, and yet you come in here crying like an eggling because you didn't save more. Who do you think you are? Arno sat still, half of his feet, and stared at his friend who seemed to be expecting an answer. He moved his mouth for a moment before muttering, Well, um, I am... Um, Callus snorted, exactly. Even you don't know, so you must keep finding purpose. Such a human trait. He glared down at Arno for another moment before his expression softened. And he sighed. You want me to find a butcher? Fine. There is this play tonight. A human one thanks to the shrilly love for your tragedies. So I should have no trouble finding you some meat. Thank you, Canis, Arno said, finally rising to his feet. He dug around in his pockets for his credit chip before handing it over to Canis. There should be more than enough, he said. I'll buy what I can, Callus said. But you must stop, for both of our sakes. Arno smiled weakly, but then nodded and left the building and returned to the streets. The sun had just finished setting, and the lanterns had been lit. The Ishrilly still used old fire and paper lanterns for their markets, 
and so the streets were lit by an orange glow of thousands of lights strung above and along the streets. Arno smiled. They had always reminded him of Japanese lanterns back on Earth. He went down the steps and followed the crowd who were on their way to the theater to see the night's entertainment. The play was Oedipus Rex, much to his surprise. If he didn't know better, he would assume that Callus had sent him down here intentionally to warn him about the dangers of pride. However, he also knew that Callus did not fancy human drama, feeling that it often involved too much blood and not enough flow of life. He smiled to himself at the thought as the play concluded, applauding with the remainder of the huge crowd as the actors bowed in appreciation. He was feeling a bit better about himself and his life when he returned to Callus's shop. He went inside, expecting to see Callus there with another person, but instead found the storefront empty. Concerned, he moved his hand to the bolt pistol he kept concealed in the small of his back. The visit to a butcher can be dangerous if you are not a normal customer, but Callus had been buying and selling meat for years. He mostly did it to maintain contacts with the slavers proper, who he would sell out to the assembly for even more bounties. Arno sometimes wondered how he kept sane with everything he'd seen. Pushing his way into the back room, Arno stopped and stared in surprise. Callus's back was to him, and in front of him, Arno saw four small children of varying species. He took his hand away from his back and nervously said, Callus! Callus turned around, a smile on his face as he clapped his hands together. Oh no, just in time. Allow me to introduce you to your new, um, he hesitated, family. Arno approached slowly, seeing the eyes of the four children looking up at him expectantly. He could see in their eyes they were not fully broken. Neither the drugs or the beatings had not yet taken full effect. Callus, he asked, still nervous. What is this? You wanted to save one more life. I give you four, Callus said, pretending to be hurt. And all you can do is ask me, what is this? Like you are confused. Callus, Arno prompted. You're a human, Callus shouted indignantly. Your species is well known for taking in and raising anything. You will bond with any species, even the ones you cannot communicate with. Plus, he smiled conspiratorially. You did mention that you were having trouble with your retirement. Arno put his hands on his face, pushing his fingertips into his forehead as he tried to process what was happening. So, you bought me children? No, Callus said, his face finally growing serious. I bought you a family. I bought you four children that should have a parent rather than a master. One that understands where they came from and what issues they possess. Callus, Arno said again, his face falling. You know I don't- I know nothing, Arno, Callus said, waving his hand to silence him. Except that you need something else to save. This, he pointed to the children, is a lifetime of saving in front of you. Four children who need you and only you. Four children who just wanted to live a normal life before it was taken from them. His frown slowly turned into a smile again as he pulled out the credit chip. Plus, I already spent the money. Arno frowned again, looking between Callus, then the children, then Callus, and then the children again. Callus, waving the now probably empty credit chip, and the children staring up at washed confusion and hope. And the ludicrousness of the situation finally hit. He began to laugh. He laughed long and hard doubling over as he clutched his belly before falling on the floor. He lay there for several long minutes, crying with laughter, before he finally calmed himself down, rather than standing. He just got onto his hands and knees and gently crawled to sit in front of the children. Looking up at them, he whispered with a smile, Hello, my name is Arno Ejinlenko, but you can just call me Arno for now. I hope that we can be friends. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click and click with energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Feudic Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Band 420, Lord Azrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.